Thank you so much, especially to the two or three that stood. I really appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, I want you to know, for, <laughs> as far as the rest of you are concerned, I believe in inner healing and I'll be fine. <laughs> you know, actions speak louder than words. All right, that's enough. <laughs> All right, that's at least half of you now, also. This has been a this has been a really, really good gathering, hasn't it? It's encouraging when so many of the prophets are hearing the same thing. Not, even, not in a denial sort of way. Everybody, everybody knows the desperate uh, need we have in this nation. And uh, no one is in denial of that. But, but at the same time, there's a word of the Lord rising that um, is saying the bowls of intercession are full. And he's about to tip them. And we're going to see the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit worldwide in church in the history of the planet. So it's going to be good. Let me just um, start by um, let me get my my clock out here. Where is it? Right here it is. I started, I'm going to talk about time for the first five to ten minutes. That's what reminded me of my watch. Just, just for review for a lot of you, uh, some of you uh, have heard me teach on this subject, but in the, in the New Testament there are four words associated with time. And are the lights up like they were last night? Can I have lights up so I can see when you're frowning? Look at that. Look at Man, most of you look pretty good today. A few exceptions here and there, but for the most part. So four words associated with time. There's chronos, which is a general season of time. It's also chronological time. We get the word chrono, chronicle or... or chronological from chronos. So it's just a season of time. Nothing strategic about it. It's just a season, a length of time. But in every chronos, there's, you eventually will come to a kairos, at least in God's dealings. And a kairos can mean an appointed time. It's also an opportune time. The best definition of kairos is opportune time. Not guaranteed time, opportune time. It's the window of opportunity that you come to in the chronos when you can reap the fruit of that season. Okay. But you can miss it. Jesus wept over Jerusalem so they missed the kairos of their visitation. So they came to a point and, and, and missed it. So we can miss it if we, just like the Israelites, came out of Egypt and they had opportunity to go all the way into the land, but they missed the, the kairos. So there's a chronos, you come to a kairos, then there's a word horeos, which means the right time. That's when you pull the trigger. That's when, that's when you go through. That's when you, you engage. I don't want to say much. I'm, I could get really distracted on that one and go down that path for a, time, for a bit, but... Uh, but then there's fullness of time, which is pleros or plerao. That's when the fruit is in the barn. That's when you're in harvest. That's when you're not plowing anymore. You're not weeding. You're not watering. You're in the season of increase. Fullness. So the Lord says in Isaiah 46.10 that, and I mentioned this last night, that... Um, he declares the end 
from the beginning. So he declares fullness from the very beginning of the process. He doesn't wonder where we're going to get to. He already has the goal. He's already seen the end result. And then he backs up to the beginning. I said last night, God is the only, only person that doesn't start at the beginning. He starts at the end. And then backs up to the beginning. He wrote the end of the book thousands of years ago. So he declares the end from the beginning. And although I was, I was involved in, a, in a, an assignment several years ago, and I've always, probably for the last 25, 30 years, uh, God has used me, in, especially in corporate gatherings, to probably more make decrees than petitions. Both are biblical. You know, we are, we are a kingdom of priests. We are a royal priesthood. So we are kingly, and kings function this way, authority flowing down. Priests function this way, the incense, the intercession, the sacrifice that the, it ascends. So we, we are to function both ways in our interaction. We worship, we petition, but sometimes sit, seated there at the right hand of the Father, we, we hear the heart of the king and he says, decree this for me. And so at that point, we're not petitioning this way, we're speaking for him this way. So I'll call it king priest intercession. So I began to, I moved into this season where I would, it was first it felt a little strange to me. Rather than petitioning him, I would just say, I decree in Jesus' name this. And after a while, I just, I mean, I checked with the Lord immediately, but I mean, I just started thinking about it and processing it. And why would I decree things that I knew were 20 years down the road? I mean, I know, but I, I knew the ways of God enough to know that you just do that. He decrees things way in advance. So you might say revival is coming to this city. I decree it in Jesus' name. Well, that may be 20 years down the road or 30, but it's coming. So, but what he said to me, and this is the reason I'm sharing this, he said to me, you just keep saying what I say. And you keep speaking for me, because that's a sword and it's a prophetic seed. And then he said this, eventually, time catches up with my decree. He decrees the end from the beginning, and eventually, time catches up with or reaches his decree. So I shared that because we've come to a point where that's happening. Hundreds, thousands, millions of prayers that have been prayed. Thousands of prophecies, prophetic words that have been spoken over us corporately. I'm talking about for regions, nations, but also for individuals. Thousands upon thousands have reached their appointed time. And Galatians 6, 9 says, don't be weary of well-doing. Weary there is really lose heart. That's a better translation. Even another really good translation would be don't lose courage. It's not a physical weariness at all, that word. Don't lose heart. Don't lose courage. Because in due season, you'll reap if you don't faint. Due season is idios kairos. Remember I said Chronos season, then you come to a kairos, an appointed time where you have opportunity. Idios means ownership. Idios kairos, a point, due season. The reason the King James people translated due season is because when you own something, it's due to you. Idios means ownership. So a good translation of that verse or that phrase would be, don't lose heart or courage in doing what you know is right for you own a kairos. You didn't get that. See, so he's not just, he's not, he's not up there trying to decide, 
They're not coming to God up the angels saying, what do you think? Should we do this for sheets yet? And he's not up there going, um, no, let him wait a little longer. He already has an appointed time. He's already decreed the end from the beginning. He wasn't surprised that he couldn't get Abraham and Sarah to the point of conception for 25 years. He was just waiting for the right time. So he says, you own a kairos. It's yours. If you don't faint. Faint. 